What's up, y'all? Welcome back to this week's Bourbon of the Week. This week, we're actually going to move out of the Kentucky bourbon world and over into the Utah bourbon world, where we're going to go to the beautiful High West Distillery that you can see behind me here. And that's going to bring us our bottle, High West Whiskey American Prairie Bourbon. Now, the cool thing about this bottle is not only do you get to enjoy a glass of bourbon, but you can know that 10% of all after-tax sales will be donated to the American Prairie Reserve. So enjoy a glass of bourbon, help the environment at the same time, two things you can't be mad at. So let's get to this bottle and let's see where it falls on the list. So here we have it, the American Prairie Bourbon from High West. This is a sourced bourbon, but they don't source all of it from the same source. And we'll get into that in a minute. Everybody knows before we get started though, time for the traditional sip. Cheers. Pretty good. So I haven't had the American Prairie in a long time. When I first bought this bottle, I was actually new to the bourbon world. I didn't really know what I was tasting or what I was getting into, but I learned from doing a little bit of research on this bottle. This is a sourced bourbon, which we talked about the other week, meaning they don't distill their own bourbon. They buy the bourbon and then they blend it and they bottle it themselves. So they buy a bunch of different barrels of bourbon from another company, MGP, which is where I'm assuming they get most of this bourbon from. But there's actually a second mash bill from an undisclosed source in this which is interesting. So they use, it says on the bottle, this is gonna get a little bit confusing, but I'll try my best. It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskey. Now to be considered a bourbon whiskey straight, you have to be at least two years barreled. It has to be a two year old whiskey. But if it's under four years, then they have to put an age statement on the bottle. This does have an age statement on the bottle saying at least two years old. So there's two year old bourbon in this, but they also put on their website that it goes up to 13 years on the bourbon that goes into this. I doubt a lot of the bourbon that goes into this is a 13 year bourbon, but the blend that they're making includes both of those years in there. So if you're still with me through all that, the two bourbons that they do buy have two separate mash bills. The product that they're getting from MGP is 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley, which means that that product, which I'm assuming is most of this bottle, is a high rye mash bill and you can get that in the taste right away. The undisclosed source bourbon is 84% corn, 84%? 84% corn, 8% rye, 8% malted barley. So that majority of this is coming in a high mash, high rye mash and I think it's pretty good when you get into the taste on this but we're gonna get rid of all that information real quick and we're gonna start straight on drinkability. It's a 92 proof bourbon and it sips really well for a 92 proof bourbon. Again, it's not the highest proof, but at the same time, you'd think it'd have a little bit of kick being such a young bourbon, but they blend this so well that it gets rid of that real harsh ethanol kick, and I like it a lot. It does have a bit of a spiciness, but I'm gonna say that that's more of that high rye mash than it is an actual ethanol kick. Even when you smell this, you don't really smell too much ethanol. So as for drinkability on this, I'm gonna give this a pretty good score of like a Let's give it like an 8.7 on the drinkability scale. So getting into taste on this is where I think this bottle actually struggles. And I don't wanna say struggles because it's not a bad flavor. It's just nothing overwhelming. Um, it's very spice forward, which is all you're really gonna get. I maybe pull a little bit of a honey note out of it, which is probably from that undisclosed side of the mash bill, the 13 year aged bottle that they uh, blend with this. But it's a very young bottle for two years age. That's kind of what you're expecting to get. There's nothing crazy. The oakiness is like really low. Um, I'm really particular when it comes to the oakiness. I don't like anything that's really oaky, and I also don't like anything that doesn't have any oak at all. This doesn't have any oak, probably because it was only in the barrel for two years. Taste, I think, though, is where this is going to struggle the most on this scale. It just seems very young, very watered down. I don't want to say it's a bad product. It's just not my favorite when it comes to the taste. I'm going to give this like a 6.8 on the taste scale. Last but not least, we're going to get into price on this. And the price on this bottle here in Pennsylvania is $39.99. Not a terrible price. We've done a couple of bottles in that range recently. I do think there are better bottles out there for $40, but this is a great cause. And let's keep that in mind when you're buying this bottle. I don't think it's an awful bottle. Um, it's a cool looking bottle. I always love the tall skinny bottles for some reason. They just stand out a little bit more on the shelves. Cork is real nice and everything like that. And the reason I think you're paying a little bit extra of a premium is because you're getting that source bourbon. They're buying, especially that 13 year bourbon, they're probably paying a pretty penny for that. And of course that's gonna get passed along to the consumer. So for $39.99, I don't wanna give it the greatest score, but at the same time, keeping in mind the fact that they are donating 10% of that, let's give this like a 7.7 .7 on the price scale. So while I add these scores up, let's get to the bourbon bomb of the week brought to you by High West Whiskey. Cheers.
So I can't mention High West American Prayer without mentioning the efforts of them trying to build money and raise awareness for the American Prairie Reserve in northeastern Montana. The end of this reserve, when it's all said and done, is supposed to be up to 5,000 square miles, which is going to be a huge step for this particular antelope that they mention on the back here. Capable of running speeds up to 55 miles per hour, the pronghorn antelope is North America's fastest land animal. Basically, they need a lot of area to roam. They need a lot of area to run. And when this is all said and done, it's going to be larger than Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Grand Teton National Parks combined. So when you get this bottle, you're not only getting yourself a great bottle of whiskey, a great bottle of bourbon, but you're also donating to an effort that's going to help preserve northeastern Montana and open up an area for these antelopes to run and play. So if you don't like that, I don't know what you're drinking this for. That's a great cause. I bought it myself not knowing that, and now that I do know it, I will definitely make sure I add another bottle or two. You can also check out, I'll link it below, AmericanPrairie.org to learn more about it or make a donation yourself. So that's going to be our Bourbon Bomb of the Week, brought to you by High West. Cheers. So that's going to give us an average of 7.73 and drop it, I believe, 20th on the list, right above Bird Dog, which we've done before. Still have it on my shelves here. A similarly shaped bottle and a younger whiskey itself. 7.73, 20th on the list, and that's actually our 30th bottle that we've done here on the channel. I can't believe it's been that many already. Not a terrible bourbon to hit 30 on. We're going to keep going. We're trying to get to 250 subscribers. Once we do that, we're going to do our next big giveaway. But in the meantime, I want you to check out my Instagram, Bourbon of the Week. We'll put the handle right here. I think we can do that. Bourbon of the Week on Instagram. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to put a picture up of the bourbon that we're going to review for that next day on Wednesday. And if you're the closest person to guess the score that I'm going to review it with, you're going to win yourself one, a shout out on the channel, and two, those four people from each month are going to be entered to win themselves a little prize that I'm going to send out to you guys. Last week, we did this for the first time on the Wild Turkey Rare Breed, and we had our winner. We did an 8.33 was our score, and Joey Venz came out with an 8.35. Very close, though. A couple other guesses out there. Joey Venz will get the shout out on this week's Bourbon of the Week. And he will be entered in the drawing of one of four people who will win one of our special prizes at the end of each month. So make sure you go over to my Instagram again. Check that out. Make sure you click that follow button so you can try and guess each week what you think this bourbon of the week is going to fall at. So I'll post that every Tuesday at 4 p.m. You'll have 24 hours to get your answer in. That Wednesday at 5 o'clock, obviously, you'll see it. And then you'll know if you're the winner or not. I'll shout you out on the video after that. But in the meantime, please don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. And as always, wash your hands. Pandemic ain't over, y'all. Cheers.